Usually when I'm painting a landscape, I will tend to start in the background and work my way forward, particularly if there's a sky or a distant horizon. Um, and the reason for that is usually, obviously, you're going to paint over the top of things. If I'm doing a landscape and I start with the horizon, then I can put things like trees and houses, etc. in front of that. Um, with this image, there isn't any horizon or even any sky in the image. However, I'm still going to start in the background. Um, and you can see I'm beginning to darken that shadow under those distant trees. Um, just using um, some burnt umber, a little bit of transparent red oxide, um, just to get that nice rich brown that you get with the red earthy colour. And in a moment I'm going to introduce um, some white to that and a touch of black to make a, a sort of a pale violety grey colour. Um, as you can see in the reference image, the colour isn't the same all the way across. So I'm just going to try and um, indicate some of those subtle changes in colour. Although at this point uh, in the image there isn't uh, that much of the dark value showing through on the reference photo, however I am going to be painting leaves over the top of the, these dark areas and I, I want some of the dark shadow areas to be popping through so I'm putting that in first so that I can lay the light colours over the top. Here you can see I've changed the colour slightly, I've just added a touch of yellow um, and a tiny touch of black to that mixture that I was using before just to create more of a green and I'm using the wet paint and mixing it in with what was already on the, the panel. Um, I don't want any hard uh, transitions here, I want it to blend this and further, further into the painting I will get a fan brush and soften all of these colours so that they're blended together. If you look at the reference image there's a gradual transition from one colour to another. Um, there aren't any sort of really abrupt changes in the colour, it just merges. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here. Now I'm using the fan brush and very gently just pushing that paint so that it mixes in with the, the layers of paint that I put on uh, previously, just to get that soft transition. A useful trick um, to use when you're trying to um, simplify your painting down is to, to squint at the reference image and a lot of the really sharp details that are in the image will disappear and you'll just be left with general areas of light and dark. Um, so that's what I'm doing, I'm squinting at the reference image and then I just get to see the big areas of light and dark and that's what I'm trying to uh, represent with the paint.
going through the same process again here on the path. Um, I started with the, the very, very pale yellow and I'm now lighting that with some white just on the brightest part of the path. It's probably the, the lightest part of the entire image and it's just off white that I'm using there. And what I'll do is I'll put the paint on and then again I'll get the fan brush and blend those colours together because I don't want any really hard edges as I say. Um, even at the edge of the path where it joins the grass bank um, it's not a really sharp line there's sort of a very blurred edge along there so I use the fan brush to create that blurred effect. just changed brushes here and I'm now using um, a, a soft synthetic um, filbert brush. The hairs on this are very soft, almost like a sable brush and that's allowing me a bit more precision when it comes to blending this footpath as I was finding the fan brush was a little bit too broad at the end. <laughs> So this part of the path that I'm painting now is actually in shadow, although the path is quite um, bright um, in terms of its value, um, this part of it is actually in shadow. So to suggest that I've actually introduced some black and a tiniest touch of blue. Um, what we generally find is on sunny days shadows appear slightly more bluish. Um, on uh, cool days where the light is quite cool um, shadows can tend to appear a little bit more brown or grey. Obviously on a sunny day we get very very yellow warm light and that's why the shadows tend to appear more blue so that's what I'm doing here. The value isn't necessarily um, much lower it's, it's a very similar value to the the path colour that's in the background where the sun's shining on the path but I've just um, changed the hue slightly so that it appears to be more in shadow. see when I'm painting that I, uh, I'll work back over an area that I've already painted. Um, what, what I generally find is the more that you add to the painting the more you have to adjust things because um, everything has to fit together so when I added that dark blue colour or that bluey um, shade to the path I've now adjusted the bit that was in the light um, so that there is some more contrast between the two. Um, so it's constantly working back and forth. Don't don't think that just because one bit's been painted you can't go back and adjust it. So now I'm going to work more in the foreground um, and I'm going to put the real dark values in for these trees. Um, 
Um, the trees are almost silhouetted against that sunlight that's in the background, so I want to get them in first, just to give me sort of a point of reference. Once you get the darkest darks and the lightest lights in place, um, then you can measure everything else against those. So I, I, although I started in the background with the shadow under the tree, I put the brightest part of the path in, and now I'm putting the darkest part of the trees in, just so that I can see how they relate to each other uh, and to get that balance right. The other thing that you'll notice is I'm still using that same sort of filbert brush, number three filbert brush that I've been using all the way through. Um, <clears throat> I'm not trying to get any detail at the moment still. I'm just working on adding texture, adjusting colors, um, and I'm gradually building the painting. Um, again, as I said in the previous video, everything here will almost certainly be painted over again. There's usually at least three or four passes on a painting. Um, and this is just the second stage where I begin to add more texture and a bit more um, richness in terms of colour. So in these areas um, on the bank at the side of the path, there's a lot of leaf litter sort of there and it's a multitude of different colours. So all I'm doing is putting these dark values in and, I'll, and I'm moving the brush around in quite sort of random directions um, to suggest a bit of that texture. And again, I will work back over this um, with a variety of different colours once this is dry.
So now I'm just dragging some of that paint from the bank uh, into the pale blue paint that's on the path just to soften the edge of that path as I did earlier on. Um, I don't want there to be a really harsh division between the path and the banks on the side of the path. The other thing you'll probably notice is that the left hand side of the path I've left um, a lot more broken so some of the underpainting still showing through. And if you look at the reference image, it's actually much lighter on that side of the path than it is on the right hand side. So I want to just suggest that sunlight um, hitting that side of the bank a little bit more. just going over all the paint that I've just put on with this um, small fan brush just to break up those hard edges um, I want I want to keep this fairly soft um, I can decide later if I want to sharpen an edge um, and what I mean by an edge is that transition from one color or value to another uh, at the moment I want to keep quite a bit of ambiguity and keep everything nice and soft because because I can tighten all the edges up later um, and to create that effect of nature it's very random and the, there are often subtleties in there that you if you try to paint deliberately they look very sort of false you have to rely on the the mark making uh, with the brush dragging the paint around smearing the paint scraping the paint back and you will create some interesting marks that you can then use as part of the landscape I think it's also worth mentioning at this point um, how I'm holding the brush. You'll notice I'm holding it a long way back. I'm not holding it like a pen and I'm dragging the brush in different directions. Sometimes I push the bristles, sometimes I drag it along sideways. Um, I'm back on the small fan brush again now just to blend those bits in. Um, and again, when I'm using the fan brush, I use it on, on the corner. I use the flat side, I push and pull the brush.
I've mixed up a darker green and I'm just beginning to stipple um, some of this, the leaves that are in the trees on the right hand side of the path. Um, I'm not going into painting individual leaves at all, I'm just suggesting leaves. And uh, as I said before, I will work back over all of this. It's just adding more texture and a variety of colours to what I'd already put down before. going to change it using the fan brush and um, same sort of process stippling but just using the corner of the fan brush and it gets uh, you end up getting some really random marks because you have less control over what the paint is actually doing and once I put all of these uh, stippling effects down I will get a very soft brush and just as I did earlier just soften everything um, because as I said this is just the foundation for what's going to come next
when you're adding finer details such as this um, I'm using a very very thin um, brush with long hairs on it. it allows me to get quite a lot of paint on the brush um, but to produce thin lines um, I'd actually probably be better waiting until this layer is dry and in fact when once this is dry I will go over all of this again and add some of the really really fine twigs and branches um, it's just that this curved branch at the top is one of the major ones and some of the um, branches and trunks of the smaller thinner trees I'll put in in a moment as well.
Now to mark these fence posts in, so that I can get a perfectly straight line, I'm just using the edge of this ruler as a guide and um, running the paintbrush along the side of the ruler. Um, it will give me a relatively straight line, which I can then use as a guide later on um, when I tidy it up with a finer brush. Um, I'm just positioning them at the moment. As I say, these will all be tidied up later on. might be wondering what that stick is on the right hand side that I'm using and actually that's an old walking cane that I've got and it's resting over the top of the panel the hooked side is sort of hooked over the top of the panel and I'm using it to rest my hand on so that I can um, produce the straightest line possible I have a really lots of control over what the brush is doing I'm still holding the brush a long way back and just you only have to turn your hand slightly or rotate your fingers down slightly 
produce to produce quite a long mark. But um, having a stick like that can be really handy. This line that I'm painting at the moment, this is a tree that's um, semi-hidden amongst all the, the other trees in the background, but I want to get the trunk in now, even though I'm going to paint over a large majority of this, just so that I know that it's there and, and it's in the right position. Just trying to add lots of texture now in the background. Um, it's much lighter green than the green that I used before, um, but just to add that suggestion of the leaves and the foliage. Again, I'm not painting individual leaves, I'm just using the, the fan brush and twisting it and turning it just to put the paint down in random places.
soft hairs and I'm just going over everything that I've painted just to soften it all down. I don't want any sort of blobs of paint sticking up on the surface at the moment so that's flattening everything down and just allowing um, the paint to, to be a little bit softer um, for the next stage. So I've almost done now with this second pass over the painting. I've got a lot more texture there. The colours have been reinforced and um, I've tidied up and adjusted one or two areas. Um, the thing to do now is to let the painting dry and leave it a few days and then I can start to work over again. In a similar process, probably starting in the background and beginning to really refine things and get the really sharp, fine details in. <laughs> 